True Believers, this is Chris Hudson bringing you a fantastic story of friendship, a story of betrayal, a story of a thing wearing underpants. Roger Corman once produced an exciting tale of low budgets and nonsensical plots. It's clobberin' time, folks, because this Fantastic Four watched THE Fantastic Four on... B-Movie to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks. Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. All right. Welcome to the show. This is B Movie Mania, and I am Crazy Chris Hudson. And with me, as always, is Paul Brooks. It's podcasting time. <laughs> uh, Jason Hulls. Um. Oh, wait, he's not in. Oh, he's on a B-movie sabbatical. I totally yeah, forgot about that. It took that. me a minute. I was like, wait, where's Jay? And then, oh, yeah, shit, he's on. That would explain why yeah. he's not here. He's he's out studying B-movies for us. Uh, he's on a, yeah. I personally think that he didn't watch this week's movie. Um, but hey, but you're hearing the voice of Crazy Mike Hayes. It's Pa... Ah, oh, fuck you, Paul. Paul <laughs> yeah, I did that, that. Sorry. Shit. Are you crazy now, Mike? Yeah, I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've been infected by the hut. <laughs> uh, it's Chris Hudson in time. There we go. Yep. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and this week we are joined by Chicago comedian Chris Arneson. It's Pod Gesterson time. No, <laughs> no, it's been done, Chris. No, he said it different. Pod Gesterson time. He did a, he did a oh, different twist. You to put it. a twist on it. <laughs> yeah. Classic twist. <laughs> hey, Chris, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah. I'm excited. Do, no, do we need to, because we got two Chris's here, should we call you Arneson? Yeah, call me Arneson, that works. Okay. Or right. Yeah, call me Arneson. Or another nickname we've come up some way midway through the crazy, podcast. Crazy Chris Arneson is a good one. There you go. <laughs> You're another, we, got, we got three crazies today. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm soon. normal. We're mixing it up this week. We'll get you, Paul. <clears throat> so if you can't tell by the kind of one-liners we're throwing out, we watched the Fantastic Four, but not the newest reboot of the Fantastic Four. And not the other Fantastic Four, or even the other other Fantastic Four. But we watched the 1994 uh, Roger Corman produced Fantastic Four that was was never actually released. Sad. Yeah, very sad. I can't understand why it was never released. And um, I'd like to get into that just a little bit, but I think we should do some quick takes first. Quick takes! Mike! Oh, boy, Give right off the take. bat, huh? Right off the bat. We are getting right into this. <laughs> okay. Hey, Jay's not around. I want to knock this shit out. You know, I always think about my, <laughs> my ratings before I start that episode, but for some reason, I never think about that quick take, so I'm drawing it out a little longer right now. <laughs> Mike, uh, you need some help? You want me to start? Yeah, please. All right, Paul. You know, I, I, I tried to watch this movie, but I couldn't actually see anything on the screen because of all the god's damn cheese whiz coming out of it <laughs> the cheese whiz yeah there was a lot of cheese whiz coming out of the tv chris arneson you sure you weren't watching a different movie i think i think good you gods it was whoo cheesy oh. cheesy horrific oh, i thought Mike you meant all the enough they meant all the pixels. Yeah, I thought you meant all the, the VHS to VHS to VHS to VHS transfers. <laughs> that could have been part of it. Slash also on YouTube now. Um, my quick take is uh, I, I hope uh, I get taken by the jeweler too someday. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cute quickie. Do you, do you just want to be treated like a queen, Mike? Yeah. It's a cute take. Thanks. Yeah, it's my cute take. All right, Artisan, what did you think? Oh, um, you know, 
I have actually never seen any of the other Fantastic Four movies except for the Silver Surfer one, which is technically a sequel. So I've never seen any of the first Fantastic Four movies, and I feel like this is the better one out of the three, <coughs> just based off of what I've uh, heard. <laughs> wait a minute. Um, wait. Wait. Let me just make sure I heard that right. No, it's definitely the better one of the three, I think, based off of what I've heard just from talking to people. Me too. I've heard this. Because it's the only one that seems to have gotten Doctor Doom right at all. Yeah, yeah, they did a good job with Doctor Doom. I will admit that's probably about the only thing I really liked about this movie. Um, so yeah, I liked Doctor Doom. That, that's your I mean, quick take. That's my quick wow. take. You went there. I liked right. Doctor Doom. It was actually quick. Yeah, it was actually it was very brave. <laughs> but uh, can we talk about this first? It was never released. Correct. No. So my understanding of it, from what I've read, is that someone had bought the rights from Marvel. For a pretty good price, really. And th- their rights were about to expire, and they had to make a movie or they would lose the rights. And so they just got a budget of a million. I've seen references to a budget as high as two million. That's what I've seen. That's what the documentary said, one million. But then it said like yeah. 1.5, too, supposedly. I also had heard that it was a rights thing, but I think I've heard that about like the reason that... The, I, I, it's like kind of like the Don Quixote of like... Of, of Marvel movies, like, because it keeps getting, like, it's cursed, you know? Like, it never makes a good one, really, and, like, it's just kind of... So it yeah, sounds I mean, like it sounds like they almost did not release this movie because this was the best one, and they didn't want to ruin that <laughs> streak before it really began yeah, of releasing went, a good Fantastic Four movie. They went into the future, and they were like, man, they only, they're never, they're never going to get it right. <laughs> it's not but you know what? They're going to... They'll reboot it again. I think Marvel will actually have the rights to it, and then that'll be, you know, fourth time's the charm, so. That's what they say. Well, Chris, of course, uh, as you mentioned, you can hear a lot more about these sort of behind-the-scenes issues on my uh, interview that I did with Mark Sykes, which aired last Thursday. If you haven't checked that out, make sure you do, because we got a lot of uh, interesting stuff that we talked about uh, on that interview. Mark was a producer on a documentary about this movie called Doomed, the uh, the behind-the-scenes story of the Fantastic Four. And, uh, yeah, definitely go check that one out. I didn't have time to watch that, but by the time this episode airs, I will have seen it. So (laughs) save save your questions for future me. But, But, yeah, Chris, just to add on to that, everything that is in the documentary and everything that I've heard is basically they had to make this movie in order to retain the rights and they never actually intended to release the film. It was made basically, you know, with the intention that it was never going to be released in theaters or anything. And I have to say, they did a pretty good job considering the terrible, the really low budget and <clears throat> not ever inten- intending to release this movie. But it's like kind of cruel that like they put them in like a two-year limbo of like making this movie <laughs> And then being like, yeah, we're going to cut funding. And then, like, Mike was telling me that a lot of people had given, put their own money into it because the movie started. Um, and then there was, like, a theatrical score in it. Which yeah, the Mike music said was that the pretty directors, good. Yeah, he said that they gave their own money for it, like, um, yeah. to get it done. Cause they, they yeah, said I mean, they if, if, you, if you watch the documentary, and I, I do, to the listeners, I do recommend you, that you check out Doomed because there's some really interesting stuff in it. It's pretty tragic. I mean, you can really yeah. tell... All of the actors who were involved in the making of the film and a lot of the, you know, the crew really put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into the making of this film. And to this day, still have some pretty sore feelings about how everything kind of went down. It kind of makes it hard to make fun of it because it is very <laughs> I, I know, and you I feel bad. You want to make fun of it, but like, then you like watch them and they're like, you know, they're so. It's like a lot of these people's like it's the biggest thing they ever did, and it must have been because they started in '92 is when Jurassic Park came out. They had a budget of a million. Me and Mike looked it up. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good in comparison. <laughs> is it one sixty third? It's one sixty third. Is it one sixty third as good as Jurassic Park? Maybe. Easily better than yeah. that. Yeah, Jurassic Park's oh, yeah. not sixty three times better than this movie. That's yeah. not the fa- that's not the case. So. Well, and Roger Corman produced this so you, you've got to tap into that know-how somehow i mean I, I don't know how much he actually did on the making of this movie but he's known for making pretty decent movies on a really shoestring budget so and that 
kind of comes through. Again, just like Jurassic Park. Was Steven Spielberg ever on set for that movie? Yes, he was the whole I time. I heard <laughs> that he wasn't. I heard when, no, when I was no, little, no, I heard he no, wasn't. Okay, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he was always there. No. Corman was never there. Anyway. There was a little bit of debate, though, Chris, uh, as to whether or not even Corman uh, was aware that the film was never intended to be released. Oh, yeah. So apparently only a couple people at the very top of the food chain were aware that the movie was not going to come out. Everybody else was operating, you know, like, like obviously a movie. this movie was going to be in theaters and everything. All right, well, let's get into it then. So let me start with a, uh, an IMDb description <laughs> by my favorite writer, Anonymous. Mm. Oh, what? wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Who's wait. funding this podcast? Yeah. Got my Guy Fox mask on while I read this. Ah, jeez. Uh, when an experimental space voyage goes awry, four people are forever changed by cosmic rays. Reed Richards, inventor and leader of the group, gains the ability to stretch his body and takes the name Mr. Fantastic. Do they ever actually call him Mr. Fantastic in this movie? I don't think they do. No. They don't even make a pun about it. It was it was a loss. <laughs> I gotta talk about the girlfriend Man. thing too. Yeah. Well, his girlfriend Sue Storm gains the ability to turn invisible and create force fields, becoming the Invisible Girl. Her little brother Johnny Storm becomes the Human Torch with the ability to control fire, including covering his own body with flame. The pilot Ben Grimm is turned into the super strong, super tough Thing. Together, they become a team of superheroes and use their unique powers to foil the evil plans of villains. Now that's is the, villains is is plural there. So there are technically two villains. There are <laughs> technically two villains. That is the longest description though, and also pretty boring. Like it's just yeah, like I a bored <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> that's why I picked it. They should just be like, hey, there's some crazy guy named the jeweler living in the city streets oh in New York. Oh. Get ready for this wild one. He's like king of the bums. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's a king of the yeah, and uh, it's. The weirdest thing ever, because it, it feels like they're part of a Broadway play. <laughs> like, theatrical ones, you know? Like, it feels like they're just ready to, like, do something dramatic at all times. Like, and, they... And don't, and don't forget... Theatrical bums, huh? <laughs> and don't yeah. forget how yeah. heavily armed they are. They all have just a gun. automatic at weapons out the a ass. Gun. They're the NRA, honestly, is what they are. <laughs> right, but but before we get into all that, let's, let's start at the beginning. So we start off in a classroom... Being taught by Punky Brewster's adoptive father, talking about the speed of light. <laughs> One hundred eighty-six thousand two hundred eighty-two. For those of you who want it in here just for the credit, that is the speed of light in miles per second. If you prefer kilometers per second, then you get two hundred ninety-nine thousand seven ninety-two point four five eight. Thank you, Reed. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Wait, was that really him? Yeah, that was totally him. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't know they had royalty in this movie. He was also in Police Academy, the uh, Commandant or something, I guess. I don't remember his he name. He was in well. every Police Academy movie, Chris? Every Police Academy. And the TV series. Wow. And probably the, probably the cartoon, go. for all I know. So Reed Richards, we find out that Reed Richards and his co-asshole, Victor Von Doom, I guess. Well, Victor, they don't even say his whole name. They just call him Victor are sitting taking this, I guess, Physics 101 class. They're brilliant scientists, but they're in a class talking about the speed of light. They're right. passing a love note around so <laughs> they can, like, show them, like, do, making their their invention. I, I, I guess. Yeah, but that's not why they're in the class. They're in the class because they're students, I think. I guess. Listen, right? can, can I say something, please? We're not going to be able to get... It, it, into this where anytime something doesn't make sense, we sit here and analyze it because right. it's yeah. going to be a four-hour show. Yeah. I, I got to say, though, for for a comic book movie, I mean, this thing is totally governed by comic book laws, like plotting, yes. pacing, everything. And I can't tell if that's actually because they wanted to make an accurate comic book movie or if they only had a million-dollar budget and didn't spend any time writing this thing. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that it's, it's partially, at least, because they wanted to make it um, accurate and sort of in the spirit of the comic. They actually took frames from the comic and sort of reproduced and replicated them within the film. It seems to be. Like, see everything I've seen is like their reasons for getting the powers they get eventually are so fucking <laughs> ridiculous, but that's like golden age of comic kind of shit, yeah, right? Yeah, or, I, yeah. I would actually love if we could take some time during this podcast mm, to talk about the powers right. that we would gain. No, hold on. Experiment. Let's talk about that later. <laughs> I said later. I didn't say right now. <laughs> uh -huh. 
All right, so this kind of talking about their powers, this is where we're introduced to Colossus. Yes. Now, what's Colossus? Did anyone get an idea what Colossus was? It's some sort of like big old rock meteor or something passing. It's a comet. Th- yeah, oh, it's, it's a in comet. The sky. That's yeah. apparently going to pass to the Earth's atmosphere, I guess. So close, in fact, that it will pass through the heart of the Van Allen belt, slow to the speed of the Earth's rotation, and become visible to the human eye. Yeah, it's and, pretty sweet. But they're going to harness it for energy, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to solve yeah. all the world's energy problems. Yeah, how would that solve all the world's energy problems? It doesn't, like, it goes past Earth, and then it's done. Like, no, but they harness the energy like Hale, they did with hale Bop for Heaven's Gate. It all makes sense. It all makes sense, guys. Oh. No, you guys are, yeah, it, 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 it logically pans out. Yeah, we're, we're, it's golden age comic logic, so we'll just roll with it. So, <laughs> Victor and Reed have created this laser that they're going to shoot at the comet to harness its energy? I don't know. And Mike, can you talk a little about what happens when it goes wrong? Well, uh, the electrocution parts all go the backwards <laughs> way, and then and then it zaps it t- like zaps a finger over at Victor Vaughn uh, and pushes him into some file cabinets, um, and then Mister Fantastic, before he becomes Mister Fantastic, cries on the floor like a baby boy. <laughs> and then uh, Grimm runs in and and pushes the electric finger off of Vaughn, uh, but then Vaughn dies, and then Newsies steal his body. I'm in a spell! I'm in a spell! <laughs> or does he die? <laughs> Newsies. No, that's the that's the underground people. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's who steals him. I think the wet bandits stole his body. No, the Latvian the p- wet bandits stole his body. <laughs> they were. Wait, no. is this is this movie in the same canonical universe as Newsies? <laughs> I think so. This is I Disney's so. Newsies. Is is uh, Fantastic Four? It came out around the same time, I think. So that makes that that it checks does. out. All yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. All right. That, that, that does explain logic. the uh, the NRA armed bums. Theatrical uh-huh. bumps. <laughs> Na- uh, National Rascal Association. <laughs> <laughs> now, what, what I really want to know is some doctor comes out. So Reed's crying at the hospital. Victor has no friends or family other than Reed and Ben Grimm, I guess. And so Reed is crying in the hospital, and some doctor comes out with a pretty bad accent and tells tells Reed that Victor is dead. And then they someone wheels his body out right next to Reed. Like, I, okay, that's... I guess that's how it's done. Yeah, and that's how they do it. They don't really explore this anywhere. Like, wh- who is this guy? He's one. He comes Chris, up. He's they, one of their thugs. You don't later, come on. He's he's been in the uh, movie like twice already. He's, yeah, he's been in the movie like twice already. And also, it's like you've never had a family member die of electrocution before. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. He's the hench. He's the henchman of the the jeweler. What? No. Now they're the henchmen of. Oh, of I keep saying henchmen of Doctor Doom. Yeah. Those are the Dooms guys. Sorry. Like, they, it's, the thing they don't. Know, the thing they do not explain is how. Victor is royalty to them, like yeah, his whole explain. connection to Latveria, which they don't explain that he's in Latveria at all. Like he's just like in a, he's just there. Yeah, they are just henchmen for this uh, this fake uh, country that they never go into and they never explain wh- how. Because like he was just a but scientist. That's in the fine. US. That's yeah. fine. No, yeah, it's fine. It's totally fine. It's just like yeah. he's dead. <laughs> they're there. Now they're there. They're dead. He's dead. Again, golden age comic rules apply here. Yeah, we don't need to explain yeah. them or think about them. Let's yeah. just keep going. People were keep, dumber back then. I, oh my god. Did they not like expect basic ideas explained to them then? I don't know. I guess yeah. his if, comics were just for kids then. And kids if a person had, had an emotion in a comic book, America would have been doomed. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Oh. oh. Now, oh. Yeah. So now I guess we're living in the future. And ten years later? Ten years later. Wow. Ten years later is the part where me and Mike were like... No, we don't have to get into this. We will Let's, get into it. We have to keep this short. <laughs> okay, we were 25 sorry, minutes into this fucking thing. We haven't talked about the movie yet. Okay. No what more. Happened? Well, all right. All right. So, yeah. So now Reed Richards is, what, like 30 years old or something with really shitty gray hair on the sides. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and, you know, he's still living that dream of Colossus. Free energy for the world. And he has made a rocket ship. So, uh, Paul, can you kind of explain the plan a little bit? What? 
Yeah, well, I mean, he's, he's, you know, he can't do this by himself. He's going to need some crew members. So he gets his old buddy Ben together from college. And, of course. Uh, yeah, of course. you got to have Ben on the trip. <clears throat> and then they go over to uh, a house to ask Johnny and Sue if they would also like to be a part of the mission a part of the mission even though apparently they're not really like qualified <laughs> uh, but no one's Reed a pilot has some reservations they 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 get into the house and they meet with uh, Johnny and Sue's mom right and you're like oh, okay this this lady looks like maybe she could be part of the mission. She's age appropriate. Yeah. And then you see their children, Johnny and Sue. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> Reed is like, I don't think this is a very good idea. And then he sees Sue come down the stairs and his boner is like, nope, I was wrong. <laughs> Let's just say his. Uh, She's in. So, Paul, you're seeing Reed's stretchy powers manifested even then. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. Oh, I didn't think about that. I bet you they had some weird sex when they. God. Well, I won't get into that. Yeah, I we don't need to. Chris and I that. discussed it on our end. I'm sure you guys thought about it, too. It's fine. Hey, you doc. Ready to go? Actually, Johnny, I don't think... We're ready. Hello, Reed. Hello, Susan. But I'm not wrong about that, right? Like, Reed is, Reed is like... This isn't a good idea. And then he sees that Sue is hot and completely changes his mind. Yeah. It's like, all right. They're totally qualified now. <laughs> so, well, we got to talk about this diamond a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, wait a minute. We skipped my favorite line of the movie. Can we back up for just a sec? <laughs> back up. Yeah. Look at you. The Fantastic Four. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's Sue and Johnny's mom named That's the it. Fantastic Four <laughs> before they were ever fantastic. She had no line. reason to call them fantastic. Look at you. The Fantastic Four. Every Marvel hero team has been named by somebody's mom, though, because at some point oh. Charles Xavier's mom was like, oh, look at you, you're just a bunch of X-Men. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, you have to understand that Golden Age comic rules apply yeah. here. Yeah, Auntie M's like, oh, you're the Spider-Man, aren't you? You're the Spider-Man and friends. <laughs> I bet what happened is Sue and Johnny's mom knew they were no way qualified to go into space. So she was just trying to bump up their self-esteem. Yeah, like a, like a good yeah. mom should. Like a good mom. So, yeah, so that's got to be what happened. And then John's mom was like, your cat's called Garfield. <laughs> what? <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, that was it. So, we then we, uh, we we see this diamond being delivered to uh, whatever the Fantastic Four have made their headquarters. They've got the diamond, and Ben bumps into a woman. Arneson, do you want to talk about that a little bit? <laughs> Oh, what um, happens here? Ben uh, Ben d- bumps into a blind woman who's an arts uh, student, and she drops a uh, vase, I think, and it statue, cracks. It's a statue. statue. It cracks yeah. in a million pieces, and then she gets up and she feels his face, and she's like, "Wow, he's so handsome! Oh my god!" <laughs> and uh, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm really awkward, and I, you know, I can't open myself emotionally to to the opposite sex." And then they <laughs> um, they spread apart, and then they, they they go, but they keep thinking about each other for the rest of the movie. They are totally like, in love. Yeah, like she's already in love. She bumped into him once. Maybe they've met before. He, he, no idea. He manhandled her. He yeah. picked her up picked her against up. her will. Didn't and ask just... her. Didn't ask her if, if it was for consent he, or anything. And just picked her. I'll let me get you real quick. Is he the only X Men Marvel guy, whatever, that has autism? Or are there more, do you think? There's probably a couple more, I think. I don't know. I mean, yeah, X Men probably. probably has a few. They found yeah. a home for everybody in this they, story. They really did. And they, I mean, even when they don't really belong, kind of how I feel about the jeweler. Uh, he shows up the, at this point. The jewel. Well, he's technically not doesn't belong, so there's that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. N- not so an actual uh, character. <laughs> yeah, not. they had some rights issues with him or something, so they had to change the character name to the jeweler oh, for the God. better. So I'd who's say. he supposed oh, to they, be? 
Mole Man. Yeah, he's supposed to be Mole Man. Oh, right. Okay. That's why he lives in a cave with a bunch of hobos that sing or whatever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but can smell sense. a diamond from a mile away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't care really. I thought the jeweler was pretty sweet. Oh, he was yeah. great. He Favorite was part. Awesome. He was like the penguin, but not the penguin. <laughs> like Danny DeVito's Penguin. If they could have gotten Danny DeVito as the Penguin, that movie would have been in every theater in America. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, also, the Penguin can't really smell a diamond from a mile away. <laughs> well, so. I mean... But when you're a mole man, Chris... I mean, a jeweler. Oh, a jewel yeah. man. Legally a jeweler, you can smell a diamond from a mile away. <laughs> oh, my. I, I didn't like understand this whole diamond thing being connected to the spaceship. Like, I, I just didn't get that it's at all. It's totally contrived. Paul, it's... Golden Age comic rules. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> None of this is supposed to make sense. Well, I even looked it up on Wikipedia to try to figure it out, and it says they are hit by cosmic rays from it due to a necessary diamond being exchanged for an imitation of itself by the jeweler. It's like okay. I think it's some sort of a prism thing. You got to shoot through the prism, and it. I don't, I don't know what happens. Yeah, next. but it's it's a shitty looking rock. It's not <laughs> yeah, even like cares? a prism. What the, I don't know what the hell it's supposed to do. And then, who cares? And then I remind her. No, it's literally someone cleaned out their fucking freezer, and it's just a clump <laughs> of ice cubes that they just took. It looks like a clump of ice cubes. Uh, sorry, it hit on Max, and I never got it off Max, and it got frozen, and I had to dig this out of there. But I think yeah, it looks the, pretty good. The budget for this movie was so low for what they were trying to do. In the documentary, they talk about like they're decorating the set and they were literally gluing Dixie cups to a wall to try to make it look more futuristic. (laughs) And not just futuristic, Paul. It's the same room room they used in a different scene. They want to also make it look different, right? Right, yeah. It's the same location just with Dixie cups. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. But I love that the the jeweler sneaks in through the the air vent, which seems like a pretty obvious gap in their security to me. But Yeah. 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 Uh, and then the lasers are spaced far enough apart that this old man who can barely walk is able to easily dance around the beams. <laughs> if, if Michael if, if Michael Jackson played played the Leprechaun in the Leprechaun movies, I feel like that's how he would have done it. Oh man, <laughs> like, it's so bad. It was like but, having fun doing it. It was so good. <laughs> But he pulls in Indiana Jones. He takes the real crystal, or the real diamond, and replaces it with an identical-looking fake man-made diamond. That causes problems. Mm-hmm. That From causes problems later on. So Reed and company go into space. Now, you know, actually, at this point, I thought that the jeweler was still was working for Doctor Doom because his thugs, Doom's thugs, were outside waiting to steal the diamond or do something with the diamond, and then they see this jeweler take it, and Doom's like, "Let it go. Let it happen." Seeing our little friend has helped me more than I could have dreamed. I don't need to stop this mission now. Now no one will capture Colossus before me, and they can die in space. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the jeweler so. was this like weird, like pointless plot that happened in the movie, but I'm so glad it did. <laughs> Like, it made the movie <laughs> worthwhile, yeah. but it didn't need to happen. Usually when you add a bunch of villains to a superhum- superhero movie, it makes it worse. Yeah, <laughs> like any of the later Batman movies. Yeah, mm. or any of the Spider-Man, like other Spider-Man movies, like Spider-Man, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 2 or Spider-Man 3, when they had like five villains yeah. in there. The jeweler They're totally up. worked. I, it made no sense to me at the beginning, but by the end, when some pretty awesome stuff happened, I was on board. I was on the jeweler train. The J train. So, uh, <laughs> hey, did you guys did you guys hear something? Is someone's mic going a little crazy? Or weird? Yeah. No, what is that? I don't. What? Hmm. Oh, mine's it, fine. Huh. I don't know. Anyway, it's weird. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and half an hour into it, they finally get into space. And there's some sort of countdown going on, but Reed's still flipping switches. And I think this is the real problem why they got their powers. It's not the fake diamond. It's that Reed didn't flip all the switches he needed. Yeah, he's got to flip those switches. Flipping a shitload Mm -hmm. of switches. Mm -hmm. And they hit zero. And then he realizes, oh, the diamond's fake. And... I've got a note that says the explosion goes on for like five minutes with heavenly music. So I guess there was an yeah. explosion. I don't even yeah. remember it. The music, by the way, now that you say heavenly, in this movie it is heavenly. It's so yeah. good. <laughs> the is music's it? great. Is the music, it? Yes. The music totally worked yes. for this. Because it was that kind of like 
cheesy, bombastic, like kind of music you want to hear in a superhero film. Even yeah, a low great. budget one. I suppose it? It, it worked well if we were watching <clears throat> Days of Our Lives. <laughs> the whole soundtrack, Paul, you want the whole soundtrack of that in Days of Our Lives? Are you kidding me? Let's do a cut. Yeah. That piano it was just nonstop. Every time something remotely like emotional happened, here comes that fucking piano. Oh, man. How are you supposed to know when emotions are happening if there's not a piano there, Paul? Hey, and true. don't forget oh, about the a, action. Okay, yeah. Yeah, good point. Action music? That's to let you know the action is happening on screen. Yeah. Pay attention. The action music was was okay. It was better, and I thought for a second that it might be uh, James Horner. It almost had a James Horner vibe to it. Yeah, it was the worst boys. But uh, <laughs> the worst yeah, anyway, boys. <laughs> it was his brother Jimmy Horner. <laughs> <laughs> J- Wait, James Horner's parents named him James and named <laughs> the younger son Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like his. His official full name on his birth certificate is Jimmy. Jimmy. Yeah. 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 That's uh, Jimmy Jam. Jimmy Jam Horner, Paul. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> and then we uh, we cut to Doom. Goodbye, Doctor Richards. Goodbye, Doctor Richards. There were some audio issues. With they did not re. Uh, they did not record his sound. So yeah, so they just all, went straight from the mask. Yeah, most of Doctor Doom's lines. <laughs> it just sounds like it's a dude talking behind a mask. It's so garbled and it's hard to understand, but it works. It's. It's. I. I believe that. I believe he was wearing a mask. Well, he was. <laughs> <laughs> and Joseph Culp, the uh, the actor who played Victor Von Doom, to this day still says that he will come in and redo his lines to make them better because it bugs him so much. I want it so bad. Well, now I know what's really holding up the release. They haven't been able to work out yep. a schedule. <laughs> yep, yeah. <that laughs> get him in the Why studio to be released. You guys should, you know, you're out in L.A., Paul. Hit him up. He's oh, yeah. There. I'll talk to Mark. I'll see if I can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. So, yeah, so the ship has crashed. The Fantastic Four have all somehow miraculously survived. Now, Johnny is super excited that, yeah, there's not a scratch on me, but Reed, he's he's, he's a little worried because he doesn't feel any pain. He's like, something's up here. Yeah, he's not too, yeah, we're fine. Doesn't that bother anyone just a little? And then Johnny sets fire to a bush with a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like that Reed questions it. He like questions the movie like the viewer should and does yeah, throughout the movie. It, ha- it happens is. multiple times. He's like, wait a minute. Why did this thing blow up? But we're fine. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> what, what is this, a movie? It's pretty great. Like, it happens throughout. There's like four other times he does that, and I love it. <laughs> and then they hear Susan. They're looking for Susan, but they can't see her. And they suddenly they hear her, but... Where is she? Where is she? Susan? Yeah? Sis! Where are you? What's the matter with you guys? I'm right here. She's got the best effect in the movie, because she's invisible. (laughs) So by best effect, Um, you mean there's no effect? Yeah, I guess that's the best effect. (laughs) (laughs) But, But Sue only reappears, like, partially, like her top half, and she doesn't see her legs, and that makes her fall. And yeah, my, I didn't get that. I don't either. But, Mike, do you remember what happens next when we discover Reed's powers? She fell down. She was about to go boom. <laughs> and then um, Reed like just reached over to get her, and it was fine. He grabbed her, picked her back up. Everything was okay. Well, but but she was way too far away to just. Oh yeah, no, he he gave his arm one of the good old stretch stretch arms. Yeah. (laughs) Wait, yeah. (laughs) I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it was pretty cool. Yeah, no, yeah, stretches it over and thing. It's where we start to see the fantastic special effects they use, (laughs) uh, practical effects they use for his stretchy arms. I have to say this this effect makes me laugh every time they show it. It's so good. It's so, so stupid. But I mean, oh what else God. are you really supposed to do? Yeah. Like his arms stretch out like that? I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it works in a comic book, not so much in a in a live action movie. It works great. <laughs> but Mike's uh, given this movie like a ninety five. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Everyone is kind of seems to be depressed to be alive, and Ben seems to be depressed that he doesn't have any powers when everyone else does. And uh, 
So they just kind of hunkered down and Man. camp out, I guess. Be careful what you wish for, Ben. Now the mm-hmm. next huge, great, giant leap in logic is that, uh, so Reed comments how they when they crash, they fall off telemetry. So no one knows where they are. But Dr. Doom knows where they are. He's been Pretty watching. Much. And probably they're probably presumed dead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think they even show some papers that yes. think they're all dead. But Dr. Doom knows. How the fuck does he know they're still alive? Did we all have that in our notes? Just, I have, how does Doom know everything? Written literally right here. <laughs> he, he does. Well, I thought his minions told him, right? Yeah, but how do they know? They weren't there. <laughs> They're always following them around in that little monster or whatever. But, like, up to space? <laughs> yeah, well, they've you guys gotta. You guys gotta understand, this is this is golden, golden age, age. <laughs> logic at work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm fair. gonna turn that into a drinking game. Listeners, oh. drink every time anyone oh, of us God. says that. <laughs> oh. And then we cut to an alley with a screaming cat. <laughs> so, so this is where we finally get to see uh, the jeweler's lair. <laughs> Mike, I know you'd be loving that jeweler's lair. I, I really loved how Chris just cut to cut to a screaming cat and then paused. Well, it's true. It That's happened. what happened. I know. It was just so good. Anyway, so, please continue. So, so the jeweler is in his lair, and we see all the all the theatrical homeless dudes, theatrical bums there, and and they and he commands them to bring him his queen. They don't even like grab her yeah. right away. They oh. just like ooh, 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 they like kind of like tickle her. her. Yeah, like <laughs> creepy uncle tickle her. Yeah, they're, like, they're like. <laughs> <laughs> She's like blind, so she's like, "What the hell? I'd be, I'd be terrified. It's the scariest thing I've you know, ever seen." Well, well, since she's blind, her her other senses have picked up the slack, and so those tickles probably really hurt. <laughs> they were quite oh, tickly, yeah, no. yeah, extra tickly. <laughs> so, and then they just do a little spray, like a uh, spray bottle thing in her face, and she's out. Like, <laughs> yeah, he had yeah. he had knockout spray. Yeah. So uh, then we cut to a convoy coming through the. The fog and uh, you know before this happened Sue and Reed were kind of cuddled up on the ground but now they're on one of the crash couches from their ship mm, I'm not going to comment on what might have happened there but they uh, probably Tammy and T-Rex oh probably what? probably good callback mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. so uh, yeah so they're found by the army yeah. by army by army, army. they're found yeah. by army army nice. has American flag though so you know they good army they're the good army <laughs> and then, and then, this is kind of a crucial moment here. This is a very crucial moment. Yeah. Because they found them and everyone's happy to be rescued. But then Ben Grimm comes out of the darkness. And uh, Arneson, I, I think you you look like you want to describe what he looks like now. He looks like a horrible genetic freak. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a canker sore, but a man. You're, you're saying he looks like... Uh... Big Papa Pump. He looks like Rick Steiner or Scott Steiner. Which one is he? Scott Steiner. Scott he looks Steiner. like Scott Steiner. <laughs> I, I don't want to say that. Cause Scott Steiner will come and kill me if he hears this. <laughs> yeah, he's going to drive up from his Shoney's in Georgia and kill you. <laughs> oh. oh, man. I hope the thing also owns a Shoney's in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> they have competing Shonies. <laughs> oh. oh boy! Oh. Uh, what Shonies have I turned into? Uh, he sh- hey, he you know what? I I, I want to defend actually this this the way that the thing looks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know that they didn't have a whole lot of money, but for for what they had to work with, he actually looked pretty sweet. It, it oh, looks yeah. great. There's a lot of like articulation in the face. It just right looks Compare shitty. Compare it to. Compare it to the one from the Fantastic Four movie from the early 2000s and tell me there's a huge difference, because I do not think there is. <laughs> they look pretty much the exact same. Well, the, the only problem, though, with, with this, Mike, you probably you probably caught this in the documentary, Mike. Yeah. The guy who played Ben Grimm, I'm blanking on what his name is. The human. Michael Bailey Smith. Yeah. MBS. He was a pretty big dude, right? He was like six foot five, big strapping guy to yeah. play the thing. And he was really excited to to get this role. He wanted to, you know, really get into it. 
but he found out that um, another actor, like a stuntman, was going to be playing the thing in the costume. Mm -hmm. And the stuntman was significantly shorter than Michael Bailey Smith. So if you look at the movie, you can tell the discrepancy of the scenes when it's Ben Grimm versus The Thing, the thing is significantly shorter. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, to me, was a, a big That's disappointing, mistake. yeah. Oh, yeah. And again, that animatronic mask that they built for that was... It's pretty good. You know, pretty sweet for the yeah. time. Yeah, they edited it around it pretty good. In the doc, they showed it like free form, like a long shot of it moving its mouth, and it looked not great. But yeah. they edited yeah. it, and or whatever they were doing, like maybe they practiced and got the the mouth movement a bit better. Yeah, yeah. But like it, they edited it pretty great uh, in the movie. Right. And so Doom talks about how he wants all their powers because Colossus lives in them. Now, is that more comic book rules there, or am I just missing something? With who's got the power of Colossus? They shot a laser at Colossus that exploded, and now they have powers. Sure. That sounds like a comic book to me. <laughs> I think right. I, good enough. All right. Yeah, All right. I, I, I think it was just radiation. And, yeah, that works. <laughs> and now we cut back to the Fantastic Four and where they're going to break out of isolation. I guess they're either all in this together or they don't go, right? And they don't go and the movie ends. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Credits. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That would have been so much better. <laughs> now, we would, have, we would have missed some of my favorite scenes. If the movie had started here, I would have liked it a lot more, I think. Oh, yeah. They all sneak out, even though one of them can turn invisible, and they get up to a point where they run into a guard finally, then they go into the guard station and figure out how to leave. Yeah. <clears throat> they see some sort of, like, they see a, a letter with some sort of writing that looks really familiar to, to read, but can't remember where he's seen it before, and then, because that's a big plot point later, yeah. and then they, then they see the big laser. Well, this is all pre-internet, so you can't remember yeah. where anything is, you can't Google yeah. it. So. Languages? No, where have I seen this one before? <laughs> the well, internet was around, I think. In 92? No, we won't get into it. <laughs> this, we're talking about Golden Age, Paul. Yeah, oh, Golden that's right. Age, Paul. Not Cyber Golden Age. Age. Golden Age rules apply. So they go into the giant room uh, where there's like the laser and like all that cool stuff that Dr. Doom's got in his like, I don't know, laboratory, I guess. And uh, then Doom comes out and says hello. Yeah. <laughs> He pretty much just says, yeah, he just says, hello, I'm Dr. Doom. Uh Nice to meet you. Uh, You are all mostly the Fantastic Four. Wait, Ben's here now. Okay, and now I can properly introduce myself. Oh, wait, zombie guard sees them, and uh, everyone runs out with their machine guns. Well, this is great, because this is one of my favorite parts, because Doom sends in the guards, like, okay, we'll let them convince you to go back to your rooms, to your your cells, and uh, I'll be back in a couple minutes. And so there's a big fight scene, and... The thing pretty much just kills all the guards. I mean, everyone else just can't really do shit. Yeah, and happily. Well, it be, yeah, it, be, it becomes <laughs> clobbering time, in which he wants to clobber them all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the first time we hear, It's clobbering time. The first of many in the last 30 <laughs> minutes of this movie. And he's pumped about it, though. He's, like, super excited to be yeah. beating the shit out of people. <laughs> And you have Rox's blood, man. You're, just, I probably you're ready good. to go. So. Can- or canker sores. He's canked and ready to tank. So, uh, so they. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the thing is kind of smashing guards' heads together. Johnny starts cutting through the wall like a blowtorch so they can escape. And Sue, like the only thing she does, she's tr- she's trapped between two guards, one on either side of her. She turns invisible, and the guards shoot each other. Yeah, like a so, lot. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, like, that's her trick. Like that part in that Quentin Tarantino movie where they sh- they kill Hitler. <laughs> like they both do that to each other. <laughs> like it's no, just... but like even if there's a girl in between you and she's not invisible, you don't stand there and shoot her because like you're still gonna hit the other guard probably <laughs> yeah. with machine guns like that. Yeah, and then it might yeah. be my favorite part. Doom comes back. <laughs> <laughs> Doom comes back in and starts saying, So, my friends. And then he stops and looks at this carnage around him. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's either dead yeah, or really missing. Good. There's some good cheese in this. <laughs> no, yeah, because he like strokes his metal chin and he goes, yeah. he just goes, hmm. <laughs> and like that's that's it. It's like four wipe right right yeah, there, right? Four wipe. <laughs> oh. So now in another great leap of comic book logic. The Fantastic Four are back home in their office. And no grand homecoming, no, hey, you guys are still alive, nothing. 
they're just back in their office, and Reed's trying to figure out how to fix them. Well, yeah, they probably got to hide from everybody because, you know, of the powers and everybody looking for them and everything. They got to be kind of, you know, they got to keep it on the DL. Yeah, that so, makes sense. So do you guys think they hired someone to smuggle them back in the country? Some. Yeah, they 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 went up someone's butt <laughs> and got back into. Wait, maybe America. they went up Sue Storm's butt oh, and that turned everybody else invisible. Oh, Ooh, yeah. that makes sense. Let's All right, see. we figured right. it out. All right, there we go. It's a little golden age comic our, logic for you there. Our folks. listeners don't have to drink now. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely so, have to drink for that. So, so, Mike, Mike, you brought this up earlier today uh, uh, in the show, but uh, uh-huh. it's where Reed kind of makes the very thin connection between their how they got their powers or yeah, why well, their powers. Like, it's not even that it's thin; it's just stuff that wouldn't. It to me doesn't extrapolate to what it becomes. <laughs> Like, so Invisible Woman is uh, shy, which she has not expressed throughout the entire film yet. Um, and so that's why she turns invisible. Uh, and then Johnny's got a hot temper, and they've kind of hinted at that a little bit. So he turns on fire. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Doc Fantac is, uh, stretches. This is the worst one. This is the biggest stretch, if you will, that he spreads himself through. He stretches himself out, like, with all these things to do. So... That's why he's stretchy. Like the the, the mental to physical <laughs> things don't seem to make sense. He's like a dick one. He's like, yeah, you're you're hot tempered and you're shy and you all suck. But like, I just like do too much. Yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> really, like just a piece of shit. And then, but the thing is, what? Oh, he always does physical shit instead of being smart. I don't know. But yeah, it's just it doesn't make any sense to me, at least. But that's that's Paul. What would you call that? What? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> the reluctant so the, four. This this leads into another pretty great scene that uh, uh the thing is pretty pissed that everyone else looks normal but he looks like canker sores on a rock. So he's like <laughs> fuck it, I'm out. And they cut to just a few shots of him walking around New York City. Like a it's like Midnight like, Cowboy, but he's just a rock man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was probably one of my favorite parts of the documentary because they production had wrapped. Like the movie was done and everyone was just like, We don't give a shit about this. And a couple of the like the director and a couple of people were like, you know, we really need this scene of the thing sort of walking around the city. But I mean, like the movie was done shooting, so <laughs> all those scenes of of the thing walking around the city at night is my buddy Mark in the thing costume, just doing his best to make it work. <laughs> Wait, it was Mark? Wow. Yep. Wow. Oh well, boy. I love that uh, the first thing the thing does when he's walking around New York City is he he, <laughs> he finds some prostitutes and they're just freaked out by him and run off. Some prosties. Some prosties. <laughs> Prosthetics. And then he's no. Yeah. Paul cut I don't know. that. Work on that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's trying to find himself. He's just really down about yeah. this whole being the thing. Well, yeah. He's just really, you know, doing some soul searching. Mm-hmm. It actually kind of makes him hard to be a villain because, like, these bums find the thing and then they're like, no, you can belong with us. Like, we're not going to judge you for what you look like, you know? And, like, and then they bring him there and they're like, hey, boss, you got to see this guy. He's He's miraculous, <laughs> you know? And, like, they... Uh, they they like him. Out, oh, yeah, he man. comes out there and he's just super nice to him. He's just super chill. He's like, "Hey, you're you're a great, you know. Like, you don't have to worry about being judged down here in our uh, in our hobo caves." And <laughs> and they're just like, "This guy's a villain, right?" You have found a home here, a world where you can rise to the greatness you deserve. <laughs> you give him anything he asks for. Treat him well. Rest. Traveler. They're starting to sound like a cult. Yeah, yeah well, he- Heaven's so, Gate. Yeah, yeah. there. Right. Yeah, there we go. Hobo's Gate. Hobo's Gate. Hobo's Gate. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all wearing the same thing. Yeah. So while while Ben is making nice with the with the uh, theatrical bums, Sue is doing what she does best and making costumes for everyone because hey, we got powers. We need costumes. Yeah, and they look like shit. <laughs> they look real bad. Is there a reason at any point someone thought spandex was good? I don't know. It looks like they have makeup bibs across the necks. 
Like, but I mean, it looks oh, yeah. accurate to the comics. Like, it does. Fine. It looks, just it like looks the accurate comic. to the Golden Age comics for sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I just don't understand anything. Like, why does Superman wear it? Why does Spider Man? wear None of it makes sense to me. It's all stupid. <laughs> then Doom attacks the bums. It's a big explosion at the gates, and then and then the jeweler takes the the blind girl and holds a gun at her head and threatens her <laughs> and tells Doom to not a step closer. You know, the, the the whole blind girl subplot thing, I, I don't think should have even been in the movie, so I might just cut it out of the podcast, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <wow. laughs> it was pointless. They do this part where she kind of pushes out, I love you, Ben, and then, like... <laughs> And then he becomes a human again. Yeah, he loses his to, yeah. he loses his canker source. He's cured. Yeah, and it never gets brought up again. No, so it can be edited out. It was oh, pointless. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yep. This was pointless. Paul, cut it. Or Jay, you didn't do anything for this episode. Jay, cut this part out. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Doom gets the diamond from the bums. It lets Ben Grimm run away, and Thing rejoins. He turns into the Thing again and rejoins the rest of the Fantastic Four. And then Doom appears on the screen in their office. Hello, Dr. Ritter. Good to see me again. <laughs> I don't even know, was that like a, just a, a screen or was it even a TV? I don't even know what the hell it was. It looked like a normal comic book like communicator screen. So, still a comic book logic. Golden Age comic Golden logic. Age comic book logic. Yeah. For the internet. So oh, That was a double drink right there. Ooh, oh, yeah. So Doom gives uh. him the whole spiel and his plan. He's got a laser. He's got they got a blind girl that the thing is in love with, and they've got twelve hours before he destroys New York. And he does, and then the movie ends. It does, and then we don't have New York anymore. <laughs> yep, that's why that's how New York ended. Yep. They used all their budget to blow New York up. At this point in the movie, I'm just I'm losing it. And it's just, just a hop. fight scene. <laughs> it's just a big fight scene. The Fantastic Four hop into this this jet. I guess they've got. That was, has never Just been seen ru- in the movie That's before. not rushing through it. They have a fight scene, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, go, fight they, scene. they go to <laughs> Latvia's fake country name, and they have a fight. <laughs> and, and then, fight. And then the, the, apparently the flame boy can fly, and then the movie ends. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the movie. That's the end well, of the they, movie. They try to get the powers from them. But but you're missing this. This is, a weird almost a, thing. this is almost a repeat of the fight earlier where everybody does nothing except for the thing. Who yeah. he's he's wearing like pants. I guess Sue made some pants for him at the he's beginning of the fight. Blue diaper, and now he's in some blue some blue underwear, blue under some blue britches, blue uh, britches. Ti- he's wearing tidy blueties. <laughs> and, Bloody tooties. Oh no! <laughs> and it's clobbering time in them under ruse because he beats the shit out of I don't know like eighty more guards. <laughs> And they, they manage to stop Doom. They, they catch Doom, but not before the laser goes off to destroy New York City. Oh, man. So, oh, no. So, Here we go. So, so Johnny goes flying off to figure out a way to save New York City. But first, we've got to have the final showdown between Reed and Dr. Doom. And it happens. And it happens. Not about it. And Doom, actually, this is kind of like, a, I guess, a little bit of an interesting twist. Doom loses this fight and... Basically commits suicide, yeah. yeah, or that's the impression that you Something get from like it. that, yeah. But yeah. so he falls, his hand falls off, and he puts his hand back up on the uh, the edge of the balcony there, and the hand moves. I just realized something from that too. Yeah, so I was thinking about it because uh, there's all these things. Doctor Doom has all these all these Doom bots that are like oh, body yeah. doubles of him, oh. like Saddam Hussein body doubles. Oh. That, that was probably a Doom bot. That definitely would have played out in the sequel. Too bad we never. Too bad we never got one. We never got. We never got one, Chris. We didn't get. We didn't, even we didn't get, get a singular <laughs> movie. You can't get a sequel to a movie that never comes out. Yeah. I just want to see a never-ending stream of reboots every three years. <laughs> You're gonna get we it. Yeah, you're gonna get it. We are on. Judy Garland's <laughs> gonna be. Judy Garland's booked to be in it. It's gonna yeah, be great. Bring her back. <laughs> she might do something else. All right. Sorry. Sorry, Hudson. Go ahead and uh, talk about Johnny Flash. Flame. <laughs> so, so this laser is heading to New York, which at the beginning of the movie we learned that light travels really, really fast. So I think uh, Johnny Storm or whatever his name is, he can fly really, really fast too, and he catches up to the leading edge of that laser. 
it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and he so stops it with his body. And it's still going. And he oh, makes the man. Work. Now, first of all, we have to talk about how this I is... I want a gif of that body being stopped. Oh, it exists. There's no <laughs> this, way. Okay, first of all, this is early 90s CGI. Very low budget early 90s CGI. Yeah. So he looks terrible. Well, you learn in the documentary... Yep. They hired an effects guy to do all the effects work, and and he basically said like that he was the lead effects guy on on all these you know big budget movies, and so they thought they had somebody who was really going to do a bang up job, and it turns out that he was just lied about all of it. He didn't really know what he was doing. <laughs> he's that he's that Tanya Harding guy. Yep. He's just, like lying about all his credentials. <laughs> so yep. So the Human Torch puts his body in front of the laser, and he. Gets <laughs> This, oh, ah, ah, oh, oh. It's, just, it's it was, making him do flips. I gotta put in some audio right here of that. I had amazing bulk flashbacks like crazy. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. <laughs> I think Amazing Bulk looks better than that. Yeah, it could, that's probably true. Then, it looks like Charlie Brown missing the football. And <laughs> <laughs> just like... In shitty 90s CGI. It looked so bad. It looked Ooh. so bad. So, sorry. So, uh, so Mike, how does he finally stop the laser? He finally he shoots fire at it. He shoots fire at it. He shoots fire at it. And then and he, he punches, punches it. all it. the way back to Latveria. And, he punches like, the goddamn laser. God. And that's it. Movie's over. Credits roll. Well, hold on. Uh, uh, hold on. Hold well, on. Then. There was. There's the wedding scene. Oh. <laughs> and as they drive off in the limo, Reed stretches his arms out the uh, the sunroof and waves bye to everyone. Who did he get married to? Oh, he got oh, yeah. married to Sue. That's right. Reed and through oh. all of this. Oh. Yeah. I guess I never picked up on that <laughs> yeah. during the movie for some reason. Well, I yeah. bet what happened is she got pregnant when they were after the crash. Oh, before no, we got, no, it's, listeners, save that. Don't we're not sharing our thoughts about how the sex worked. We're just keeping that to ourselves. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that Reed did the honorable thing. And credits. Credits. Play Hooray. some more fucking over dramatic music. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> Rating time. I think we should rate this. One to one hundred, clobberin' times. Ooh. <laughs> okay, huh? All right, Chris Arneson, you're the guest. Ooh. Let's uh, let's hear what you thought of this. How how many Ooh. clobberin' times wow. would you give this one? Forty four times two, minus what? minus <laughs> twenty two. I'm gonna give it sixty six clobberin' times. <laughs> oh All geez, right. there was oh. math. Speed of light, baby. Oh, you, have, you have to put that whole equation light. in the rating. That makes sense. Oh, yeah. What was the speed of light? <laughs> I think it was 82 something. I assume what you said is right. All right. Mike, since you're on my screen right now, how many clobbering times did you give Fantastic? Uh, well, let's see here. So, the movie I thought had quite a bit of fanfare and uh, machismo that uh, I really enjoyed. <laughs> um, it's It's not great, but it's like. Pretty. How do you put it? Now push the button. Yes, that one. Is your mic? Did you push it? Cutting out, or is that just me? I didn't. What? (laughs) It is I, Jason Hulls. I'm taking over this pitiful little podcast using my podcast interrupting ray. Where does one get a podcast interrupting ray? Let's just say there are benefits to being on sabbatical with Dr. Victor Von Doom. However, I could not let this episode conclude without giving my review of the Fantastic Four. So here it is. There was way too little superhero stuff considering it's about the Fantastic Four. For that matter, there was way too little supervillain stuff too. I don't know if there was too little plot spread over too much time or too much plot jammed into one low-budget movie. I'm glad I saw it, considering its history, but it's not something I'd rush to see again. I give it 53 clobberin' times. Now, I will release you listeners from my grasp and drop you back into the episode still in progress. Those fools have no idea what I've done. <laughs> now, now, now you push the button. Push the Push that one. No, that one. Yes, right now. So I give it a. I'd give it a seventy then. 
70? Wow. All wow. right. I, th- I thought it was fun. It was a fun artifact, you know? As, ev- as obviously everything I just recently said, uh, as you all heard it. Um, well, you know, I think our what? mic problems are happening again, but um, yeah, I think this seemed to be solved now. So, Paul, what would you rate this? I mean, the thing is, I'm not a big comic book guy. I really don't watch hardly any superhero movies. I don't read many comic books. So this is just not... This was not going to be my cup of tea to begin with, but it was slow and they clearly had a lot of budget constraints. But at the same time, that kind of made it fun to watch. And all the backstory that we now know about, you know, I kind of factored that in a little bit. So because of that, um, yeah. I'll say 57 clobbering times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's fair. Seven. All right. I think I'm on about the same page as you, Paul. I think uh, mm-hmm. the, the budget, you know, clearly there were some budget constraints, but I think they did a great job considering how little money they had. Yeah. So I'm going to give it, uh, I was, I'm going to give it 63 clobbering times. Mm-hmm. Hey, okay. All right. And I think it uh, bears mentioning that, you know, a lot of people, Put a lot of hard work into yeah. this movie when they when they knew that it might not turn out that good. But there's something about that for me when you see people really putting in that extra effort. It's it's nice when people care about the project they're working yeah. on. So that's that's a good thing. I think it really comes across on screen, despite everything else. Yes. So so hey Chris, so um, you have anything you want to talk about before we go? Anything you're working on? Any plugs? You're a comedian. I, yeah, I do. I do comedy out in Chicago. Um, I try to post about it on my Twitter page, uh, Chip Snackerson, um, at Chip Snackerson, um, or I'm in an improv group called uh, Chicago Breakfast. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We usually post, or we do always post about what shows we have. We do shows at Laugh Out Loud Theater in Chicago, Illinois. And we're doing a lot of shows at like CIC or IO or uh, hopefully more at Second City soon. So you could always uh, look online and see where we're at there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's good stuff. I have a lot of fun going to these. Mike's our number Genuine, one fan. Genuinely. Oh. Like, I don't have to go, but I go. He doesn't have to go. <laughs> he doesn't get anything out of it. It's, 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 Links it's down below night. to all of that on the website. Ooh, thank mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. All right, we had a good time with you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you. I, pre- I really appreciate it. Yeah, All fun. right, now tell a joke. Take us out with a joke. <laughs> okay, um, well, uh, it's not It's not like, you know, I, this is like, you can't, I'm not really on the spot. Haven't I done oh, enough for you, Paul? Oh, what's Jesus. next week? Haven't I what's done enough, next Paul? Week? What's next week? Cut that out. Hey, Jason, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> on the next episode of B-Movie Mania... Paul! Paul! I think it's your turn next week, right? Wait, is it is it really my turn? I next? think it's your turn. Well, that's what I was trying to figure out. Is it your turn or whose turn? Exclamation point! Question mark! Exclamation point! Hey, I didn't oh ride God. through the order. I didn't roll any of that shit. I don't. Oh, I, just, I know. I go third. He's giving you shit. Just throw it to him. Are don't you ask guys him. Excited <laughs> to find out about the next movie we're gonna watch? Exclamation point! Oh, question no. mark! Exclamation point! No, this is a bit. <laughs> this is a bit. Paul's doing. We no. are. We are. Oh, Paul, fuck. tell what? us. Tell us. Exclamation what? point! Are we going to watch a talking cat? Exclamation oh, point! Question what? mark! Exclamation point! Are you fu- <laughs> what? I have no idea what's happening. That's on right Amazon now. Prime, and I'm very sorry for you the pain picked that. <laughs> you picked this. This is a kids movie, right? This is a classic kids. Um, Mike, I think you'll enjoy it quite a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B-Movie Mania. Woohoo! Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, you can you can follow us on iTunes, because you just search for the name B-Movie Mania, Stitcher, Google Play, all that shit. Review, please. 
Interact. I'm begging. Interact and review. Reach out and touch them. We also have a store <laughs> that you can go to. We're uh, touching we ourselves. sell t-shirts, and we got some new Buy shirts coming uh, very soon. Or they might already be in by now. Well, it'll depend on uh, when that Yay. artwork gets in. But check it out. It's awesome, and we love you. It's, it's Quentin time. time. That worked out. <laughs> All right. Whew. Paul, what's the name of the movie we're watching? <laughs> a talking cat. A ta- exclamation that's point, question ta- mark, ta- exclamation point. That's actually the name of the movie. A talking fucking cat. Exclamation, exclamation point, point, question mark, oh exclamation point. Oh you gotta say it like you're surprised. A, a talking cat? Yeah.